Good morning, East. I'm Dahlia. And I'm Hansel. And here's another installment of your Eastside Eli Report. The College Prep Center wants to celebrate your achievements, seniors. Bring in copies of your acceptance letters to the College Prep Center so we can add them to the acceptance wall. Now, th for this week, do you know, in, in 1940, fewer than one in 20 adults held a bachelor degree. From 1945 to year 2000, the number of bachelor degrees awarded annually rose from 157,349 to 1 1.2 million. Come down to the college, college Prep Center in room F116 to find out how you can attain your bachelor. And now, more announces, announces, announcements with Delia. Good morning, students, staffs, and parents. Are you interested in helping to develop and refine the code of conduct at East? Mr. Robinson and Mr. DeFazio would like to form a committee to continue their significant work. This committee should include all the stakeholders, such as parents, students, teachers, administrators, administrative assistants, SSOs, and paraprofessionals. Please stop by or email Mr. DeFazio or Mr. Robinson if you are interested in this important work. Meetings will be held the first Friday of every month after school from 3.40 to 4.40 p.m. in D113. The first Code of Conduct Committee meeting will be Friday, February 5th at 3.40. Now here's Principal Blocker with a special announcement for all students. Good morning, Lower School Scholars. This is Mrs. Blocker, your principal. Next week, the Upper School Scholars will be taking their Regents exams Tuesday through Friday. It will be extremely important for you to remember to keep the noise level down in the hallways, in the stairwells, and as you go to the first floor, to the cafeteria, to the nurse's office, or to the music wing. All scholars should only use the stairwells that are designated for lower school scholars, which is the second floor, D-Wing West, and the third floor, D-Wing West. Please try and use those all week long. You will not be able to access the music hallway the way you normally do. You will now need to go by the clinic and go behind the stage and across to the music rooms. If you need any help, there is a security officer right there at the corner that can guide you to where you need to go. And now I would like to say good morning to all of our upper school scholars. For any ninth grade scholars who are not scheduled for any Regents exams next week, we have some other great opportunities planned for you. Tuesday through Friday, you will have a chance to make up classwork and labs in all four core classes. The sessions begin at 8 a.m. and will end at 11. Please arrive on time and take full advantage of this opportunity. Scholars that are in grades 9 through 12 who are scheduled to take a Regents exam, we need you to arrive 30 minutes before your exam time. All morning exams, you should be there at 7.30, and all afternoon exams, you should be at school by 11.30. No one will be admitted to any exam after 10 a.m. in the morning and 2 p.m. in the afternoon. That means you have limited time to complete your exams, and we certainly want you to do your best and be able to shine, so please be on time. For your cell phones, if you bring a cell phone to the exams, it will be collected by the proctor in the classroom. No backpacks will be allowed. Anyone who didn't turn in a phone and is caught with one during the exam will be dismissed from the exam. Breakfast will be served for any scholars that want breakfast. After the morning exams, lunch will be served if you want to have lunch and then catch the bus home. Bus schedules will be posted in the student cafeteria for the week. Starting Monday after exam week, all upper school scholars will have specific places to go that currently have excused periods on your schedule. Your counselor will know where your location will be. Please make sure you stop by and see them. Many of you know when I have seen you in the commons area, I have asked where are you supposed to be or what class do you have, and you've indicated you don't have a class right now, and you are correct. 
Now we have a spot for you to go so that everyone feels that they have a place at East and that our school is an organized environment ready for teaching and learning to take place. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Principal Flocker. I'm Phoenix. And I'm Sam with a special announcement. Mr. Raglan has sent us a special shout out for Friday's fire drill. Mr. Reed was very helpful to the teachers and scholars in F-104. Thank you so much, Mr. Reed. Phoenix? Thanks, Sam, I think. Attention all mock trial participants. Our next mock trial meeting will be taking place on Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Please see Mr. Snyder for a bus pass so you can get to school. And don't be late. Also, model, model United Nations will be meeting after school Monday. Please head to Mr. Snyder in D119. Now here's Delia with your words of wisdom. And here's your words of wisdom. How many of you have ever failed a test? How did you feel? Did you feel sad, frightened, defeated, or not smart enough? These are feelings most of us have when we are faced with failure. And believe it or not, most of us face failure many times in our lives. So the question is, what do we do in face of failure? Do we find someone else to blame? Do we give up on ourselves? Or do we quit trying? Now listen to these words from American writer Albert Hubbard. There is no failure except in no longer trying. Today, remember this. If you're feeling that you fail, find someone to talk to about your feelings, and then look for new ways to succeed. We have the power to change the world, Isai. Now let's get to work. <laughs>